Hello everybody, it is Greek Blood here, giving you guys a quick tutorial on how to make your films look more cinematic. Um, I previously did um, a lesson of this on After Effects, but it was more of a color correction only type thing. But today we're going to do it on Final Cut Pro X, and we're going to show you guys the whole ordeal. So just go, completely ignore this. This is an old tutorial. It's a piece of crap, I admit. So let's get started. So we're just going to open up Final Cut Pro here. Um, <clears throat> this is Final Cut Pro X, I forgot to mention. So um, what you do is you're just going to do the, you know, the usual new project. And then you're just going to uh, import your uh, file into the timeline and we'll get started. So you can see here's, um, here's the actress. And uh, we're gonna, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make it look more cinematic. So what you want to do is, before we start off, the main thing is widescreen. Because every cinematic, you know, action flick type thing always has widescreen. It's, it's a main component that we take for granted. So we're going to start off like that. Usually what people do is they'll bump straight into cropping, and that's wrong. Because when you crop, you're going to be missing a lot of action that's going up here and at the bottom, and those are main components to make the, 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 the shot look effective. So without ruining these top and bottom portions of the, sh the whole thing, the shot, what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to do this effect, the uh, transform effect. Now. I meant you're going to drag it. You're not going to expand or contract it, if that's contract. You know what I mean? You're just going to bring it down. That's what you're going to do. So right about there, maybe. That's that's good. Now what you're going to want to do is, now you're going to take the crop tool. Crop this out just a, a lot more, actually. So probably to there. Double than what you um, did before. So that way, so it doubles right there. We're going to bring it up, and that's the top of the screen, and now you can start cropping down here to make it equal, even. And I'd say, you know, make it less at the top. But you can't, because you right there. So that basically is the widescreen effect. And it's more important that you see what's on top, because that's usually the case with actors' close-ups. If you want to see the bottom more, then just do the, the whole thing I just told you, except um, in reverse, so just bring uh, the bottom showing more, and then you know, you know what I mean. This is what I wanted though. Since it's a headshot, you need the top showing. So it's been cropped properly now, and the widescreen is in there, and it's been done properly. Now let's get on to making the cinematic madness happen. What you want to do is you're gonna go over here to the Inspector tab. If you if you don't have the Inspector tab, if it's just like this for you, and you're just gonna click the I that, and then you got the Inspector tab. You just want to click Video. So the inspector tab. Um, you know, browse along the effects, and we're going to show you a few of them. Stabilization. Now, I will do stabilization, but usually, I recommend you do not do this. I recommend during filming you either invest in a, you know, a, a crane or a dolly track system. That way, stabilization. You know, sometimes it can go on the fritz and it doesn't work the way you want sometimes. And that's the truth. I'll show you right now. See, as, as soon as we start, it's not going to look the best. Right there, we might make this, you know. I'll show you. At the, at the ending, look what happens. See, that is not good. That's what you get with stabilization. It's not going to look the best. But you know what? For this, I might as well. But I'm just saying, usually don't use this because the the technology isn't quite there yet. So just stick to during filming, maybe invest in a camera crane. And um, it'll still look as smooth as this, if not smoother. So with that aside, we're going to start the tutorial. You're going to go down here to Effects and um, switch to Basics. Because you have a whole bunch of preset effects. And the way to go for some people are they're going to use the preset, preset effects, you know, like this. And that's fine, to each his own. But if you want to be a filmmaker and you want your film to look top-notch, you're going to have to start using the effects given to you and customize and do all that and learn how to use these, these effects. So there's a few ways to go. And I'm going to tell you them. So you can get Magic Bullet looks, which is going to cost, and that's the downside of that. And what you will do is they'll have a lot of presets for you that are professional, and they'll let you customize it professionally. You know, that costs. 
you know. But if you have Final Cut Pro X, and I'm going to show you the tools without paying, of course, except if you don't have Final Cut Pro X, all you need to use are the basics tab. Listen to me. What we're going to do is we're going to have this crisp, crisp contrast. Drag it on, and you can see right now, like what, what's going on. This is too, this is too um, fake. It's too exaggerated. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and the inspector and lower the amount to more reasonable. See, I'd say right about there. That's reasonable. Usually, if there was no snow, I would make it a lot more. Um, this this effect. I'd make the amount of the con the contrast. I can't say that word. Contrast a lot more, but since I have snow, it'll be washed out too much. So remember, the the black in the scene has to be crushed a bit, just, and the white should not me not should not be completely washed out because that'll look really bad. But this will do. You shouldn't have the same problem as me. I'm an idiot. Um, so we're gonna use tint. Drag it on there, and you know what? That that's interesting. It's it's an interesting thing. But what we want to do is we actually want to change the color of the tint because this is not good. This is not what you'd like to see in an action movie. So go up to the inspector, colorize, switch it to a blue, a dark, dark, dark blue, and then move towards the green just a tad. So you got a kind of color like that. Look here if you want, or you know, look there. And we're going to change the intensity and lower it maybe to close to halfway. That way, it's mixing in, it's saturating with the original colors, so you don't have a completely green video, but what you do have is a color-corrected film. So right now, there's a pretty good example of color correction and cinematic, a cinemascope type thing. Another alternative to, if you don't want widescreen, and you actually want a vignette, which is, in some films, they have, um, I'll just remove the crop, and I'll remove the transform. So this is the original footage. If you want a vignette, which is, I'll show you. Stylize. Vignette. Where this thing happens, where it's kind of fading out. That's what you're looking for. If that's what you're looking for, I just showed you how to do it. That's a vignette, you know, that's used in a lot of, a lot of action movies. And um, if that's what you want as your alternative, instead of using uh, the widescreen, go right ahead. That's a common use method. Either way is effective. So there's all the things you could do to make your, your, your scenes look more cinematic. Also, one last thing. What we're going to do is um, we're going to go up to Share and Export Movie. Now, before we start our export, I would like to point out the following to you. If you shot um, your film in 24 frames per second, 1080p, or 720, whatever your, whatever your, you, you know, your, your quality was, um, it should have been shot in 24 frames per second. If you didn't, it's fine. Next time, just remember, camera should be set to 24 frames per second because that gives you a great great cinema type feel because that's what they use in, in action movies. So 24 frames per second, highest quality you can get, do it, do it. If not, you know, there's still something you could do in post. You could um, export to current settings. If it's, if you aren't shot in 24 frames per second, leave it current settings. If not, then you're going to switch to HDV um, 25. Cause it's, that's, just listen to me. Now, next. So this is for somebody who didn't shoot 24 frames per second. New project 10. And if you're not sure, then just do this just in case. It doesn't hurt. Just save it as tutorial. And you're on off to the races. So there you go. That's how you do it. Um, I will show you the clip afterwards. And um, I'll see you then. So basically, that's all I have to show you guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning into this tutorial. And if you have any suggestions and yeah, any problems or concerns, please leave it in the comments. I will not hesitate to answer them. That's what I'm here for. And if you want me to do, if you have any other ideas for a tutorial, Final Cut, you know, After Effects, anything like that, let me know, please. I will do in my power anything I can do to help you guys. This has been a Greek Blood tutorial, and I am tuning out.